Hello and thank you for joining me for today's webinar on scenarios. So today's our second session. We're going to be looking at income, expenses and completing your scenarios. So thank you for joining us. Um, again, now if you haven't watched our first session, you can find that on our YouTube channel. Um, however, if you have already created your scenario and are just tuning in to find out how to explore these areas, then welcome and let's get started. So I'm your host today. My name is Sudesh Modali and I'm a Partner Success Manager here at Figured. Now before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping rules just like we did the last time to ensure everybody gets the best possible experience through Zoom. The first is, we recommend you close down as many apps as you can on your computer during the webinar to give Zoom the best opportunity to stream clearly through to you. If you lose what's happening on screen, look for this icon that you see on screen now along the bottom of your, of your desktop browser and hopefully clicking on it will reopen our webinar. Now, if you have a question during the webinar, please click on the Q&A option at the bottom of the screen and put it in there. And if we can answer back during the webinar, we will. There may be other team members on the line. Alternatively, we might cover it off at the end so that everyone else can hear the question. And now the one last part of it as well. Uh, now, while webinars, you don't have the mute option, but if you can double check and just make sure that you are on mute to cut down on any external noise. Great, so what's in our sessions? Now we've already had our first session um, on scenarios and these first two sessions are covering off a lot, how to create a long-term view of your farm and a long-term plan using the scenario tool. And today we're going to expand on that uh, and build out income and expenses. Uh, and that feeds into another webinar series uh, about how to create your annual plan using Figured's planning grid. Um, so the insights you gain out of the uh, scenario planning tool or the reports that you get at the end, you turn that into your first month of your annual plan and get your stuff started on the right trajectory. So as it says here, you get a 12 month plan to track, report and forecast against. The 2021 plan and subsequent annual plans aligned to your long term goals will help you achieve them and keep you focused. And these are also great on those lending discussions when you're at the bank or with your accountant. Now, what's on today? So we'll do a brief recap of session one. And let's look at some of the areas that we covered. Then we'll jump into adding and editing income. Then we'll look at adding and editing expenses. We'll finish off with viewing and exporting of reports. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end. As we said the last time as well, if you do need any help, we have a few different areas for you to gain this. So the first is our live chat, and that's in-app live chat. Now we do reach, ask that you reach out to your accountant in the first instance, as they are the purveyors of your license and also have a lot of skill in-house um, to help you out. However, they may send you to our green bubble or they may reach out to um, us by themselves. Um, but either way, the green app bubble is how uh, you gain access to our customer success team. Um, our video tutorials, so our YouTube channel has a great range um, of content uh, from previous webinars through to detailed tutorials uh, on specific areas of the application. So this is a great place to get yourself up to speed and all things figured um, and also expand your knowledge and, and become an expert in certain areas um, that are along your operation type on farm. Um, and the last area is some good reads. So we've got a great case study and, and upcoming case studies um, on our blog and it's aimed at helping farmers uh, navigate the future and navigate these difficult times. So we also have talks on there uh, with industry leaders from the accounting space, the banking space and also the agricultural space. So jump onto the blog and that's figured.com forward slash blog and have a read. A brief recap again on the scenario tool. So you'll remember in the last session, we looked at the why around planning and why it's so important to have a long-term plan for your business, um, either to help yourself grow and achieve success or to mitigate for a future emergency event. Now the scenario tool helps you do this by seeing further down the road with a detailed two to 10 year plan. So you can start by building now. So you create your status quo scenario and it's your business as usual, if nothing had changed. Um, and I said, as I said the last time, this becomes your guiding North Star and sometimes reveals insights that you may not have understood about your business's current trajectory. Now, the where is creating actual scenario models around where your farm could go in, in, in the future. And this could be, as I said before, successful um, or mitigation plans. It's entirely up to you. Um, and the how, um, the how will is the 12 month plan. So the 12 month plan is taking the information you've gained out of this um, a five year scenario or however, however long the scenario is and putting that into a 12 month plan using Figured's planning grid. 
So without further ado, let's get in and create our first scenario. Now, a lot of you on the uh, on the line may already have your scenarios created, or you may have created it in, uh, along with myself on the last session, um, or you still get to create your scenario. Either way, um, if you do have it, open it. It's always great to follow along, and it might generate some questions for you that you can ask at the end. Awesome. So the first thing we'll look at is what we covered in the previous session. So obviously we looked at creating a scenario and importing our data source. Uh, but we also took a look at our um, opening position and entering in our assets and liabilities. Um, now we also took a look at the proposition, which is what we're looking at right now. Now the proposition was a collection of our assets and liabilities from the opening position, as well as the ability to add new ones. So we look, took a look at how to create a new purchase and add a funding source for that. Uh, but we also looked at how to edit existing assets and liabilities um, to be able to sell or revalue them. And also on um, the loan side, we looked at how to restructure a loan and look at different loan options, um, such as going to interest only, changing your payment terms, uh, changing your interest rate, but also putting one off uh, payments that, uh, into your loan to bring that debt down faster. So for today's session, however, we're going to take a look at income, expenses, and also a brief look at the summary report, but also more over the reports in general uh, onto the next area of the scenario. Great, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at income. So let's expand out income. And the first thing that we see is the trackers that we imported. So in this particular example, we've got a milk tracker, as we can see highlighted there, and we also have a dairy cattle tracker. Uh, now, that could be any livestock tracker, sheep and beef on the line. Um, you've also got a sheep and beef tracker that is very, very similar, if not identical, to the dairy cattle tracker. So listen along carefully as a lot of the stuff that we cover in. Um, the livestock tracker applies to all stock types. Now, we also have an option to add income. Now, that's on the bottom left, clicking on add income. And that add income allows us to add in any new income items such as new milk trackers, new cattle trackers, new um, farm operations, um, such as horticulture, crops, or any other income codes that are in your chart of account that you may code to, such as dividends or rebates, and so on and so forth. So let's get started. So first thing we'll do is we'll jump into um, livestock, so dairy cattle, and I'll do that by clicking anywhere uh, on the dairy cattle. So here we are. So the first thing we see is a stock rec. Now this stock rec is going to be familiar to most figured users. It follows the same format, whereas we showed our, our openings, births, purchases, sales, debts, aging in and out, and then our closing at the end. Now at the top, what we do see is an ability to enter in automatic calculations. Now we'll cover that briefly in a moment, but automatic calculations basically allows you uh, to automate the births, the debts, and the aging within your, within your herd, and only have to manage the sales and purchases. Now you have a configure livestock area. So that configure livestock area is going to allow you to configure some of the um, parameters, excuse me, for the automatic calculations, but also define the stock values for each stock class along all of the years of the scenario. Now this area that's highlighted right now, this is the main working area of the stock rig when automatic calculations are not enabled. Um, so as you can see, all of those uh, zeros are blue, meaning they are links, which means we can click on them to be able to enter uh, transactions directly against those. So if I had to click on a sale, as we can see, I'm going to click on the actual zero under R2 Hippers, and I'm opened up into a lovely sale window like so. And the first thing we see is the ability to, first of all, add a new transaction. So we can see it's very easy to add multiple transactions, a bit different to the figured um, main stock rec, where it's a little slower, obviously, because it's dealing with day-to-day -day activities. Here, you can add a host of transactions in that same window by clicking on the Add Transaction option. Uh, you've also got date quantity, weight, live or carcass weight, amount, and obviously is your price per head, per kilo, um, or in total. So it's very, very easy to add transactions. And now a similar thing applies for all the other transaction types, with births, debts, and agings obviously needing a lot less information. So the next thing I wanted to focus on is, as I mentioned before, the automatic calculations. What are they, and why do they make, uh, make sense? So to enable the automatic calculations, you click on the automatic calculations area and it drops down to show you four tick boxes. These are to enable auto aging, auto births, auto debts, but also to clear any auto quantities that may have been previously added. 
So what you may find is you've created a new scenario, you've created a new tracker, and it's enabled the automatic calculations by default. Now what that will do is it'll cause a lot of movements in your stock rig, so it'll be very obvious that this is happening. And um, so what you want to do is click in here, untick all of the auto calculations, but tick the clear quantities and hit update. And now what that's going to do is going to clear all of the automatic calculations that have been enabled. Now this is really important to note because if you had if you have added your own movements and then mistakenly or even if it's on, on purpose added the auto calculations afterwards and now you don't like it, using the clear quantities options is only going to clear your automatic calculations, not any of your actual manual transactions that you created. So you're safe to go ahead and do that. Great, so the next thing we're gonna look at is configure livestock. So if we click on the top right and configure livestock, we're gonna get taken into the configure livestock window. Now the configure livestock window is tasked with two different things. The first being uh, giving you the option to change the parameters for the automatic calculations, and the second being to manage the valuations or the, the value per each livestock class in your scenario. So we can see there, automatic calculations for the scenario, valuations, birth rates, and also death rates. Now the first thing we look at is birth rates. What we can see here is the ability to set the calving percentage for the applicable breeding stock, in this case it's MAs and R2 heifers, um, for each, or each year of the scenario for each specific stock class. So straight away a lot of editability there. We could potentially change the calving percentage in each year to reflect any um, future modeling we want to do or something that was already happening on farm. Now a similar thing applies to the death rates as well. So actually, before I cover that, if you do want to edit these, you just click into the number and you're able to edit that. Now for the death rates at the bottom, what you will see is a death percentage and the field works exactly the same as carving percentage. You click into the air that you want, into the box that you want, and that's going to create, oh, that's going to be able to change that death percentage for you. The valuations will work exactly the same. So with the valuations, you can enter a valuation amount for each specific stock class for each year across the entire life of the scenario. And that's really handy because what you will see is herd scheme values are loaded in against every livestock class by default. So when you uh, import or when you create a new trend, uh, when you create a new tracker, it's going to import those herd scheme values. However, if you import your tracker from your main part of figure, it will maintain those values. So sometimes you might want to tweak those to, because you might be on NSC or you could want to change to some future herd scheme to see how your herd value may potentially increase as the IID releases. So the next thing we want to look at is the milk tracker. So the milk tracker, we can see here, we access that by just clicking anywhere in that milk tracker field and that's going to take us in to that milk production tracker. So the first thing we see in the milk production tracker is some basic names. So at the top, we've got the milk tracker name, the region, the milk company, the operation type, and the milking platform. Now with the milking platform, you wanna make sure that you enter in the effective hectares as that compared with the rural property and effective hectares is gonna work out um, some production values for you in terms of um, the productivity of your herd. So that put together with the production, um, that put together with the production amount, the peak cows milked, um, as well as your farm area is going to work out those farm summary stats for you. Now the next area we can see is the actual production information itself. Now this area is tasked with showing you what your production is for each year, what your price is and what your peak cows milked are. Now if you've created a brand new milk tracker, you will notice that this is where the screen ends. So you're only given these three options, production, price and peak cows for each of the years of the scenario. Now that's how the blank scenario also works. And the benefit of that is if you're not focusing heavily on what you're doing at a, in a given part of the year and you just want to do some modeling and, and capture in your income, it's a great place to just put in a production, put in a price and some peak cows, and it just captures your overall income position and lets you move on the scenario uh, a little bit quicker. However, if the focus is on um, your more production itself, and you'd like to maintain the curve that you've had previously, or you'd like to set up a new curve, you can do that by ticking use custom monthly values. And that use of custom monthly values will enable this bottom um, milk area that you see now. And it's basically a full milk year. And as you scroll down, it'll show you the retros as well. Now, if you imported your tracker from the main part of Figit, it's gonna enable this by default. Of course, it's got this rich um, production information, potentially even coming from Fonterra if you have the um, farm source integration enabled. You don't want to lose that, so we import that directly in here. And what we also do is we add in an extra year at the very front. So you'll notice 
at the top, you see 2019 to 2024, even though this is a five year scenario starting in 2020, we basically just add in the 2019 year so that we can accurately work out your deferreds and your may pay due. So here we go here, ticking use custom monthly values will disable it if you have it enabled by, by default or it will enable it if it has not been created by default because you started a brand new tracker. Awesome, so that's how you create a MOOC tracker. The next thing we wanna look at is adding in any new income items. So we could do that on the bottom left here by clicking on add income. First thing we see is the ability to add new income items for milk production, crops, horticulture, and livestock. So this is where you would come in and add in a new tracker should you need one, or should you want to experiment what one. For dairy, you might want to do that because you're looking at you know, a, a share milker or a contract milker, or you are a share or contract milker looking at moving into a new operation type and you need to create a new milk production tracker. Most of the time though, this window is used to enter in other income items. So with other income items, uh, there is a lot of income uh, that would come into a business or a farm that is not captured purely by the income trackers available uh, within Figured, and they potentially are off-farm income or just other types of income. And here we can see, you know, capital gain, we can see some grants, we can see rebates, more company dividends, uh, bad debt recovery, whatever your business case may be, this is where you add in those added income items, you, they can be captured. Now this has been driven by your chart of accounts, which sits in zero and is either controlled by yourself or your accountant or both. So if you do see um, this window just here and you don't see the code that you want, it's just a matter of reaching out to your accountant, they'll create the code for you in Zero, and that will sync into Figured and show up in the scenario tool here. As we can see here, we've entered into more company dividends for 2000 and spread that across, and also done the same thing for rebates. So that brings us to the end of income. So the next step is expenses. And to do that, we're gonna expand the expenses area by clicking so. Expanding the expenses area shows up all the different components of expenses within scenarios. So we see an option to add expenses, but we also see an option to click in and access the main expense area. Now these are two of, they, these are one and the same, excuse me. So clicking add expenses or clicking anywhere in the farm working expenses window that's highlighted now will take you into the same window. Once we're in here, what we can see down the left hand side is farm working expenses, lease and rent, interest, depreciation, taxation, personal and drawings, and CapEx. So these are the expense areas, and this is what we're allowed to edit and um, within the scenario. Now, because we imported data into the scenario, we do not have the grouped and total options. For those of you who may have created a scenario from blank, you will notice two extra tabs named grouped and total, which just require less data entry, and they're a little more holistic in the way that they capture their expenses. However, we have imported our expense position from zero and figured, which means that rich coded expense position that we've spent all this time doing in our day-to-day -day activities is be able to be brought in here and spread across like we see right now, which straight away takes our most previous expense year, which is the year just passed, and just charts it out. Now we can increase that by set percentage, which we'll look at in a second, or we can leave it as such. Now, if you're directly coding into this window and you are finding it really difficult to scroll around, you can use the search option, which is highlighted like so. Now at the top right, you will see, um, and you see this on the other windows as well, is your ability to change the way that you enter data. So right now, we're entering data on a dollar-based um, format. We can change that to be dollar per kilogram of milk solids, dollar per cow, or dollar per hectare. Um, now sometimes you might use this to see uh, what those fig figures are after you've entered in the actual dollar amounts, or some of, the, some of you may actually only know the amount based on those, um, those options, in which case you can click on that and just enter your expenses based on that metric. Now, if we want to enter in an, a, a, an amount into farm working expenses, we can do so by clicking into the cell itself and entering that information in. But what we will want to also do is, the, is to have the ability to spread now to spread, we head down to the bottom of the scenario, which has been highlighted like so. So scroll down to the bottom and you'll be able to see a spread option. Now this spread option is on your income um, trackers as well, and as well as your expense trackers. It allows you to spread a value across the rest of the scenario by a given percentage. Now it's set by default to zero. However, if you want to change that, like I've done so here, you can do that. And you can also change the year that it applies to. Right now I've got 2020 
and I'm increasing my expenses by 2.5% each year, you hit spread and that will take you across. The next expense area is lease and rent. So this is quite straightforward. It just allows you to enter in a rent expense um, for each year, as well as enter in a lease expense. In this particular instance, we are able to enter in the leased hectares, the effective lease hectares, but more importantly, the cost per hectare. At this point, I've got it set at 1,250, and that quite easily works out my cost per hectare. Again here, you can put in an inflation value um, and spread it by say, you know, 0.8% or by 1.5%, um, or if you've got a discount set in you can put in a negative percentage and that will spread that negatively. This is the next tab we're going to take a look at. We've got two tabs here, loans and overdraft. Now the loans, what you will see is that it's just a repeat screen of the interest window that you have within the actual loan itself. So if you click on the loan itself, as you enter in new repayment types, and interest rates, as we saw in the first session, it's going to save those interest rates each time you do a restructure. Now you can add additional interest rates on top of that or variable interest rates. And this window here under the loans tab just allows you to do the same thing. What we're really here on the screen for though is the overdraft tab or the overdraft facility. Now you can set this overdraft facility up at the very beginning in your opening position by entering a cash position that's overdrawn. And that will overdraw you against the system bank account that's just behind the scenario. Or you can leave it out and come in here and enter it in maybe in this year, maybe next year, maybe in subsequent years. And what this is really useful to do is to try and help you figure out, all right, how do I get out of overdraft if you're in a certain position? How do I reduce my overdraft um, if you were trying to get it to a certain point to do, some, uh, to do something else? Now this overdraft tab is mainly tasked with helping you figure out whether you should or shouldn't be in or out of overdraft. So if you're already in overdraft, you can figure out how to extend it, how to reduce it, how to meet a certain mark by a certain time. Or if you haven't taken out an overdraft yet, you can model that in here and see what the actual expense is to extend an overdraft on your account. As we can see, we click on overdraft and we click into these areas here and edit the utilization, the interest rate and the facility limit. Now we're gonna take a look at is tax. So the taxation is a new automatic tool that we've uh, entered into, into the scenario recently. So before that you had to enter tax manually. But basically what we're doing now is we're taking your net profit before tax, your NBPT, as you can see there. Now this is your net profit before tax as worked out by the scenario. So if that value is not right, it just means that whatever uh, information is entered in, into the scenario isn't correct. So you can tweak that accordingly and then come back in here and verify um, that that taxable profit is correct. Once you've confirmed that that's correct for the opening year, you can enter in an opening accrued tax loss, put in an effective tax rate, and that's gonna work out a tax percentage for you. And as I said before, you can enter in an opening accrued tax loss um, and you can get that information from your accountant. Now we're gonna take a quick look at a couple of different areas and the first being personal and drawings, depreciation, and CapEx. Now I've grouped these areas together because they are the manually entered uh, portions of the expenses. So you, they don't belong to any other area, they aren't automated in any way, and it's required you to enter in a singular value and spread that across the remaining years. In this case here, it's personal and drawings, and I've put an 80,000 that's slowly increasing um, up to 88,000 in 2024. Now with depreciation, you would assume that that may, may be tied to an asset. Uh, we are working on that functionality and that should be coming soon, but for now, you work at your depreciation um, percentage manually uh, or cost manually, you can reach out to your accountant and they can give you a hand with that as well. Awesome, so that brings us now to the summary report. So at this point, we've completed all of the data entry within the scenario, so there's nothing else to enter unless you're making changes. And at this point, it's a matter of interpreting the data and making sure that it models what it is that you expected it to model. And that is exactly what the summary report is for. So while we do have reports and more comprehensive reports in the next section, the summary report just gives you a highlight reel of the main parts of the scenario that A, enables you to gain some early insights and B, allows you to scroll up and down this page and ensure that the data is correct or the model is, is accurate before moving on to the next stage. So you can scroll down to the bottom and you can take a look at two areas, farm summary and financial summary. So with the farm summary, you like I said before, if you've taken the time to enter in these values, such as the effective area of your milking platform, um, the effective area of your farm, the peak cows milked, um, is the size of your herd, uh, whatever the case may be for your specific operation. If you took the time to enter that in, we'll work out some handy farm summary stats just here and regurgitate those to you. Otherwise, you can just ignore that 
and go ahead and look at the financial summary. Now the financial summary is obviously the most important part and it starts to show us what it is that we've been doing in this scenario. And again, I want to make a note, this is a highlight reel, meaning that the components that you see in the scenario aren't all of the components that make up the bolded uh, areas such as gross farm income, EBIT and net cash movement. Now the areas above it are part of the calculation but there's other areas not shown in the summary report that make up that full total. Like I said before it's a highlight reel. If you do want to find out the exact component of that makes up for example gross farm income you can do that on the cash flow report or profit and loss report on the next page where you can expand out and see everything that's been calculated to come up with that number. And once we're done, over on the bottom right, we can go ahead and click next. And that brings us to reports. So here we get to see all the great things we've entered into our scenario and how um, they've taken effect over the life of the scenario. So the report options that we have over on the top right are a summary report. So we resurface the same report again, a profit and loss, a cash flow, a balance sheet, and a livestock summary. Now what you will also see on the bottom is the ability to see indicators. Now indicators are just visual representations of whatever the reports are telling you. So it's an easier way to either sit down with yourself or your team on farm and just have a look at some of these indicators and see where the farm's headed without having to actually dig into the numbers and the report. Now you also have the ability to add a note. You'll notice this on the summary report on the first page as well. So you can add notes to these reports and have them print out with the reports or just be read by other users of um, this farm's figured file. So basically you can add a note and put in anything that you need to add into the note and even tick on option to say print on report. So the first thing we're going to look at is a cash flow report. So we can see here income, operating expenses, interest, personal and drawings in GST. Now we can see that's all been collapsed. So one of the benefits of the report is that we can now start to expand and have visibility over areas we may not have been able to see in our previous um, part of the scenario. So to do this, we click on that arrow as shown just there, and it expands out our income area. Now we can see our income's made up of um, dairy cattle, sales and purchases, milk tracker uh, production, other income, and some direct cost in there as well. Down the bottom, we can see on operating expenses as we start to expand it, a whole bunch of different um, categories, on-farm categories, and we can expand those out and see what they're made up of. In this case, we've got electricity farm and house. So a lot of visibility there um, for each year and for the all of your chart of account code. So this is where being able to spread those expenses really comes in handy uh, because you're getting those actual expenses. Instead of just having one line for electricity, um, it's been split out into farm and house because of the information that you've had sitting in zero today. So next we're going to take a look at indicators. So to have a look at indicators, you expand and click on the indicators option on, on the top left as shown just there. And the first thing you're going to be shown are some farm summary stats. So again, these are the same farm summary stats that uh, we spoke of on the summary report where you're able to enter in the effective area and some other uh, metrics around the scenario to be able to get these types of farm uh, metrics. Here's just a visualization of that. So again, you can open up um, this here and put it up on a big screen and have a, to have a, a meeting or a talk with the rest of your team and show you guys how you're progressing or how you could progress based on the scenario model. Now we'll also see these little widgets down here showing other various areas, things like equity percentage, principal interest cover, closing cash position, and net profit. Um, so again here with the closing cash position we can see um, this is going in the other direction. So we've gone from a positive into a negative in late 2024. So many, many reasons for that. That could be intentional or it may not have been intentional and now these indicators have actually helped you realize that, hey, wait a second, I may have been focused in another part of the scenario entering in um, different um, metrics, but now I've caused my closing cash position to swing way into the negative. So that might not be an intention um, at all. On the other hand, it could be an insight that you didn't quite understand and it could be, look, this is the cost of doing X and X. It's going to mean that my cash reserves are going to be really low and potentially slip into the negative. The last area of the scenario tool is the ability to export. So now we're able to export to PDF, a summary of profit and loss cash flow indicators, a balance sheet and dairy cattle. Now that's really, really powerful to be able to export these to PDF. We can keep those, um, attach those to various different areas or send it out. Now the first thing you would be wondering is why you cannot export that to any other file type such as Excel, CSV, or even back into the main planning grid. The short answer to that is it's coming. So we are hard at work trying to build that uh, functionality out so you don't have to worry about ever even leaving Figured and you can take the information from the scenario and automatically gets pulled into your planning grid and helps you get started on that 12 month plan. Right now, however, 
while we build that, we allow you to export to PDF. And in subsequent sessions with Scott, you're going to take a nice close look at how you can use distribution curves, which come as a feature in the planning grid to help you spread out um, some of these annual values that you've generated in this scenario. You can mark your scenario as complete. So marking it as complete doesn't do anything to the scenario itself in terms of permissions or accessibility. It will just mark it with the green tick as complete. And what that basically does is it lets you know, all right, that scenario has been done. If you've got one or two scenarios, it doesn't really make a difference. However, if you've got a team or you've just created 10 or 15, knowing which ones have been completed and sorted and, and out the way is really, really handy. So there we have it. That's um, scenarios in our session two done. So we covered quite a lot in that session. We took a closer look at income and expenses and also how we could spread those out evenly and interpret those in reports. Um, so that brings the scenario session uh, to a close. So if you haven't watched session one, make sure you get into our YouTube channel and watch session one and join that up to session two. And if you have any questions off the back of session two or about your scenario or figured in general, like we said earlier on, make sure you reach out to your accountant in the first instance and either they uh, will reach out to us or they'll guide you to reach out to us through live chat. Have another watch of these videos if you need for information. Uh, and like I said, jump onto that blog and have a read of those great articles. Thank you once again for joining me and I hope that everyone has a great day.